masked by darkness, written by my eyes don't breathe on Reddit. Three scratches, there, gashed deeply into the decrepit face of my cabin, were three spindly lines. The absolute blackness of the night attempted to conceal them, but found its efforts unsuccessful. Of course, when living in the middle of the woods, wolves are the first suspect for any deformation or damage, and would have been my excuse for the marks, if it weren't for the placement. The jagged slits stared down on me, definitely out of reach for anything on four legs, and it definitely didn't explain the chunks of blackened rubber. After ruling out any overly curious wildlife, the only other option was another person. At least, it's the only other option which wouldn't get me glances from anyone I divulged it to. Despite this, I wasn't immediately panicked. I wouldn't have moved out into the woods if some delinquent's poor attempt at intimidation could rattle me. Instead, I decided to head inside and get in bed, partly due to being unfazed by the poor attempt at a threat, and partly because I wanted to show the prat who did this just how unfazed I was. I constricted the blanket tightly around my body and let the sensation of sleep take me. My senses embraced me as my eyelids struggled open. The purest of darknesses concealed my surroundings as I heaved my body into a seated position. It's only once I had fully stepped back into consciousness that I realized why my body was so alert. The faint shriek of wood flooded into the desolate forest. I knew instantly that whoever had to face my cabin had returned. I assumed to try and reinforce their message both into the logs and into my mind. Like a bullet discharged from a gun, I leapt out of bed, clutched my axe, and stormed to the entrance. The door swung violently inwards denting the interior wall as I began to holler out to the unseen vandal. It was like flicking a light switch. One moment the woodlands sat in an unmoving tranquility, and the next, everything seemed to burst into movement, both the rage of being woken up and of a prepubescent rat trying to spook me, filled each word that had escaped my maw with rage. By the time I thought to search for the culprit, the frantic rustling of the woods had ceased. Any traces of the felon must have been virtually invisible. After the bout of screaming, I headed back up the stairs, and jumped back into bed, unaffected by the previous encounter. The blade of sunlight tickled my face, gently guiding me back to consciousness. The slit in the curtains was just enough for the light to wriggle through. After releasing a monstrous yawn, I assisted the curtains along their pole and descended down the stairs. Once the morning ritual of breakfast, showering, and changing had been completed, I headed out to thoroughly inspect the damages. The gashes were still embedded into the side. I don't know what I expected, honestly. For the damage to have vanished overnight? My finger glided smoothly through the interior of one of the gashes, Analyzing every crack and crevice. I'm unsure of what compelled me to do this. After a session of brainstorming, I decided that putting up a camera would be the best decision. 
I had managed to forget about my delivery, so when the weedy pull of a boy appeared at my doorstop, with a meager little box perched in his palms, I was pleasantly surprised. A mass of pimples populated his face, and wisps of ginger hair spiraled in every direction from the top of his head. I glanced at his eyes as I removed the package from his arms, and the most concentrated fear stared back. They were glassy and hollow. If they had once contained joy, they did very well to hide it. His body was unmoving, unfeeling. If it wasn't for the hushed thank you, I would have pronounced him deceased. I watched passively as he gradually drifted towards his van. As he turned the key, it sputtered to life and was quickly swallowed by the horizon. After an hour of the camera not cooperating, the digital simulacrum of my porch materialized onto the screen. The scratches, although not the centerpiece of the shot, were still clearly visible in the top right. After that, checking the camera had melted itself into my routine. Every night after work, I would place myself at the kitchen table and skim through the footage. I never expected to find anything. But knowing that I would catch the culprit if he reappeared to expand his work gave me an innate sense of control. The soft whir of the engine kept me company as I pulled up to my cabin. That shift had contested my patience and self-control, pushing them to the break of their limits. The battered tin machine chugged to a halt allowing me to slip out of the driver's seat. As I approached my cabin, something stole my gaze. The familiar scratches which usually greeted me had shifted, contorted into words. Behind you. I didn't dare turn around, whether from defiance, stubbornness, or fear. Instead, I rocketed towards the door hoping that whatever I knew was behind me would stall its attack for a little longer. The weight of my body collided with the door as I tried, trembling to force the key into its slot. My grip grew shakier the longer I took until I was met with a satisfying Before I could steal another breath, I was inside. My body pressed against the locked door. During my frantic escape, I had unknowingly expelled the keys. But that was only a passing thought, due to either morbid curiosity or routine. I tapped the security camera icon on my phone and skipped backwards to this morning. Quivering, I skimmed through my empty footage. My gaze forever vigilant, I awaited the entrance of the figure, my heart threatening to burst out of my chest. Every second of silence was torture. Finally, a glimpse of black occupied the edge of the frame. It meandered up to the marked wall, and my whole body began to quake. It was cartoonishly tall. Its shoulders greeted the top of the door frame. Its skin was as dark as charcoal and was littered with bubbles and blisters. Its bones pressed tightly against its flesh on the brink of tearing through. Its sockets were devoid of eyes, instead oozing rivers of thick black sludge. I stared on helplessly as I meticulously carved two words into the wall, every stroke of its fingers into the wood, tearing away more flesh. Once the words had been fully engraved, 
It scrunched its body and forced itself into the cabin. Into my cabin. Soon after, I stared in pure horror as the ghost of myself exited my car, studied the message, and locked myself in my cabin. My stomach did somersaults as I tugged feebly on the doorknob, hoping it would magically unlock itself. Movement was impossible. My body had shut down, shoved over its tipping point by fear. As I panicked, a floorboard behind me let out a subdued creak. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe, it helps the channel a lot. See you next time.